Hi, I'm Dr. Blake Bloxham. And I'm Dr. Alan Feller. And we're from Feller and Bloxham Medical, a hair transplant clinic in Great Neck, New York. And we're here today to talk about uh, a different technique that we've been performing on patients that we're really just starting to kind of roll out and discuss here. And this technique is something a little different. It's something that I don't think we've really seen done much or at least described before. And what this technique basically is, is it's almost a middle ground or mm -hmm. a third option between the two accepted and established uh, techniques today, between the strip technique where you take a large strip from the back, close that up and use that for your transplanting, uh, and the FUE, which is mm -hmm. kind of the other side of the spectrum, which is where you're taking the grafts out one by one. What we've noticed is that there are kind of pros and cons to both techniques. Um, there's patients who fit well in one versus the other. But what we also noticed is there was this whole world between the two techniques that was not being explored. Oh yeah. People were, were very dogmatic when it came to either strip or either FUE. And what we thought is, well, what about all this in the middle? You know, mm -hmm. there's lots of ways to take out graphs that is not a strip and it's not FUE. And we thought there were a lot of patients who could be very well served by exploring this area. So what we started doing was, was taking out sections. We weren't taking out a full strip and cutting that up. We weren't taking graphs out one by one, but we were taking out little sections from the back. And we could do this a variety of different ways. Sometimes you could use punches, almost like an FUE, and take out sections. Other times you could take out larger ones that were almost like mini mm -hmm. strips. Um, but what we found was that we could take these out very broken up, very spread out throughout the donor, and we were really able to get excellent results with it. You would get the, the growth that's associated with the gold standard FUT technique, mm -hmm. um, but without the connected linear scar in the back. And so we, what we want to do today is present one of these cases, one of these what we're calling a non-strip harvest or an NSH patient. So let's dive right in here. So when this patient came, um, you know, I thought he was best suited for the, the strip technique. Um, the area in which he needed work done requires very, very good, consistent, thick growth, the hairline region. Uh, and traditionally, this is best achieved with FUT. This patient could have done an FUE in this region. The problem is that because of the growth issues, because of some of the character changes you can have when uh, with the, in the hair shafts when you do it as an FUE, um, I didn't think it was best suited for him. I, I didn't think he'd get the results he wanted here as an FUE. Didn't want to do it as an FUT. Um, he's had some issues with scarring in other areas of his body in the past, and he was just a little bit concerned with the harvest, with the scar. So what we did is, is I presented him with that third option. I said, look, I don't think you know, FUE is worth it for you. I think you're going to get you know, fine little dot scars in the back, but you're not going to get that good growth in the front, especially with that kind of silkier hair he has. Um, I said, I understand some of your reservations about the strip. Uh, I think they're a little unfounded. I still think he would have had an excellent oh, you know, yeah. scar as a strip. Oh, yeah. um, however, what if we did it like this? What if instead of taking out you know, a, a strip um, to get those, you know, I probably did about 1,800 graphs on them or so. Instead of taking out a strip like that that was one connected piece, what if I broke it up into two centimeter little pieces? So what we did is we ended up breaking up what would be a strip pretty much into six two centimeter little pieces that were put at different heights and kind of different directions spread out throughout the donor. So this is how he looked uh, right before, before surgery. And here's another example of how he looked right before surgery. And I'm showing this right side because it really just illustrates what he was here for. You yeah. know, he's, he's here for those corners. He wants that, that hairline, uh, that, that strong hairline there. If I can there. step in, what's really important here is that you'll notice that he's very bald in the areas that he came in to fill. All right, he's not thin anymore. He's bald. Mm -hmm. But look at the top of his head and the back of his head. It's still quite thick. Very thick. If yeah. you were to do this as an FUE, which typically has, if you're lucky, 80, 70, 80% growth rate, that's if you're lucky that's still not going to be enough to give a satisfying, luscious kind of hairline no. that will match the rest of his hair. He'll just look like he has thin hair where he's right now totally bald. I agree 100%. But that's yeah. what made this, this mixed um, non-strip harvest technique the way to go because yeah. now he could have the benefits of a strip surgery without having taken a long strip out of the back of his head. So I think that satisfied exactly what he was after. Right, precisely. Okay, so let's show that. Yeah. Okay, so this first picture I'm going to show here is what he looked like immediately after surgery. And I know this is a little bit uh, anticlimactic here because you can't see anything. The reason why is because this is what his donor looked like after the little pieces were taken. If I were to comb his hair back, which I'm in the process of doing here, you would see six little stapled up 
areas, six little segments, pieces right. from the back that we took. Not one long line, six yes. little sections that are separated by huge gaps of untouched yeah, big, skin. big gaps of hair, they're different heights, slightly different angles. Uh, and I'm gonna show this a little clearer here. So this is what he looked like 10 days later when he came in for staple removal. So this is the exact same part of the donor area that I had the hair combed down before. So now I have the hair combed up and you can see what one of these little NSH segments looks like. It's a two centimeter piece that I, we took a little mini strip, little segment, and closed it up with staples. Closed up beautifully. You can probably pick up on the video, the scar is gonna be in the middle of these staple here, staples here. So this is what he looked like uh, 10 days after surgery. And before I show the results of the actual surgery, the most important part here, I do want to show. For them. <laughs> I do want to show the results of the scar because we've been doing this progression here. So this little line right here, that's kind of pulled up in the corner because the way I'm combing up the hair there. This is the scar. So he has six little scars like this. You can pick up another little piece of one here. Six little scars like this across the donor area. And what he got in exchange for these six little scars is excellent, excellent grafts that we knew were gonna grow right. like quality strip grafts. And if you look here, look at this big segment between these two scars. He's got about an inch of good hair between these two scars. As you can see, they're at different heights. This one's a little lower than that one. This one's going off in a slightly different direction to kind of follow the curvature of the scalp. But what you'll particularly notice is that they're not connected. He does not have one strip line across the back. He's got these little broken up scars. Okay, so now what I want to get here to is the results. So if you remember, oh, yeah. a, a seems like they get forgotten every once so in a while. So if you remember from the the beginning picture, which I'll pull up here in a second, you know he was completely missing all this. This whole triangle up to about here, all across the hairline was gone. So this is completely rebuilt here um, with Beautiful. those NSH grafts. And like I've I've said a couple times now, strip quality grafts, which means they're going to grow. Mm -hmm. You're going to get that 98% growth rate. You're going to get that rich, thick quality growth that you need in the hairline. The the character of these hairs here, and this is 12 months out, is the same as this here. This is his native hair here. This is the transplanted hair here, and you can't tell the difference. Yeah. Like you had said before, Dr. Feller, if these were FUE grafts, which can not be as thick, not quite have the same character to them, it would not have looked like this. He would have looked thinner in this region here with a thicker tuft right there. And here, here it is from another angle. And again, I'm going to put the comparison up here in a minute, but just, you know, illustrates the same point. Everything's combed together there. Everything grew. Um, and you really can't tell the difference between his native hair and his uh, transplanted hair. So just a, a quick side by side here to illustrate the, you know, the points. So you can see them next to each other. Um, so this is what he looked like before. This is what he looked like 12 months after. Uh, I actually think this patient is a little bit of a slow grower. I'm going to have him come back one more time at 18 months because I still think there's some room to mature. But as you can see, you know, mission accomplished as far as the results in the front. Um, the trade-off for these results in the front was were six little broken up scars instead of one long connected scar in the back. He's able to go shorter with his hair if he wants. Uh, even if he shaved it all the way down to nothing, of course you'd see the scars, but they wouldn't look like the you know kind of classic yeah. FUT strip scar, which again is fine. The, the, you know, I, I don't want this to come across as we're saying this is better than an FUT scar because remember that FUT is still the gold standard. Oh, yeah, uh, even far. though we believe this technique is excellent for a lot of patients, that it can produce the same results in the front. Um, if you're a guy who's young, if you're a guy who's losing a lot, and, or you might lose a lot in the future, you still want to stick with the gold standard strip. However, we feel like this technique is is pretty much up there as far as, as the benefits of it go. Um, and we found that a lot of patients love the trade-off. You know, they are happy to, to not have a full strip harvested at once. They're happy to have more of these broken up scars that are easier to conceal and look more like trauma than, than surgery if you shave them down. So example here of this NSH, this non-strip harvest technique. And the growth yields are far better than FUE, oh, no. much more consistent. The yeah. grafts are much hardier. The grafts are no more injured than they would be from an FUT case. Home run, great case. Dr. Blake Bloxham. Dr. Alan Feller. Thanks for watching.